welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwig Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the Tangle Kinetic from Anne Griffin. Now, apparently this one has been around for a while and I don't know, it just caught my eye. And uh, I'm like, oh wow, how come I've not seen this one before? Well, there's lots of tangles on uh, tanglepatterns.com. Um, all right, so uh, those that say, oh, I have the shaky hand, this one is for you. Oh my gosh, I love it. All right, this starts off with a dot grid. And I'm going to start with, or not, not a dot grid. I did a... I, <laughs> Let me start that over again. All right, rewind. <laughs> a grid of squares. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, I was too excited. That's what happens, see. And let me tell you, uh, your grid does not have to be uh, anywhere near perfect. I think it adds to the whimsy of it. Um, so just don't worry about it. Mine always, I, you know, sometimes I practice, I'm going to practice doing a, a grid of squares because they always end up different, um, uh, different sizes. But this one, we're going to fill in. So let's see, I'm going to start in the middle. What's nice about the fill-in, of course, is we have opportunity. I want to really want to fix that one, but I'm going to come over here first. Uh, when we fill in, we have the opportunity to course correct because there's no such thing as a mistake in Zentangle. So we just make little course corrections here and there. And so, in, so as I'm filling them in, I wanted to fill, out, fill the ones that were say the largest first and then start with the others because then you can do like this and just reshape it yes i was also doing it kind of fast if i do it do something like this slower it of course helps um, but sometimes even if even if not i'll start at a certain uh, distance apart and then it either goes smaller or bigger uh, but at least it kind of goes gradual if I had try if I tried to do that on purpose you know I, it would never turn out right it's just so funny but at the same time it's okay no such thing as a mistake in Zentangle no mistakes at all So once you have that done, and well, you know what, and I, no, it, <laughs> no, it is, it is weirdly offset, definitely not centered, but it's okay. I have this, you see, you see that kind of an angle because it's the best way I could find to set, set it up so that way um, you can see the tip of the pen most often. All right, next step is we're going to connect these boxes. So somewhere near the center. Just, a, you know, a, a wavy line, a squiggly line, whatever kind of line you want to do. Oh, got one. <laughs> That's it. I mean, no, there's more to it, but. It, so here's what I love. The grid doesn't. You know, my grid doesn't turn out so hot, it, it, but it ends up being okay when you add these squiggly lines. I love it. All right, then inside each box, somewhere towards the center, I'm just going to put some orbs. And these filled in orbs, you can play with this. Whoops, that one was kind of close to the box. You want them kind of closer to the center. I'm apparently showing you all, all kinds of different ideas on this, <laughs> and I should just grab a thicker pen and just daub it 
a newer micron and so it's a little scratchy when you when I'm doing something like this so then it kind of bounces all over the place okay there we go and then they get a little odd shaped guess what we do next more curvy lines so connecting each dot to its closest box. Again, with, you know, wavy, curvy lines, whatever ends up happening, happens. I love it. And this is where she ends it. Now, if, if take a look at the... For more inspiration, like now what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry this all the way out to the to the outsides, like off the page, because then, then it will totally disguise the fact that it's off-center. <laughs> and off-center is okay. But I kind of, I like the idea of having it be a little bit more than just those four squares. And then we'll do the dots here. Yeah, take a look at the, for more inspiration, like, uh, because Anne shows some additional ways to use this. And it's just really, really clever. I could see using this uh, as a border where you could just do, uh, you, have, you know, two sets of squares. And, and that could be your border. I just love it because it's, it's, so, it's so whimsical with the curvy lines. It's like uh, the Tangled Cheesecloth. If you've not done that one, it's su that's such a great background tangle. And it involves squiggly lines also and just has such a neat effect. And she didn't really show shading, so this one I wouldn't suspect. And I played with a couple uh, things on my version of the step out. And I don't know which I like better. But you could do a couple things. One, if you're doing this as a fill-in in, in a section, you know, of, of a tangle, you could fill in the whole parameter of what, you know, where however you're filling it in. Or... Uh, and I think I liked it best. I, so I did, on mine, I, I did it two ways. I put graphite on these little, the X's, and just did that. And it was okay. Oh, just thought of something else. Well, I don't know if it would work so great. It, so, you know, I put graphite there. Yeah, it was okay. But I think I'm going to just do, let's just do on the grid line. The squiggly grid line and two you don't have to shade it at all it's up to you and trying to make it kind of even on both sides so, so I, I just w with it being a squiggly line it makes it difficult mm -hmm. I might come back with a little bit heavier maybe we'll see Just, it adds something. And like I said, you don't have to. It, you know, well, I was just thinking, do I want to? Do I want to play a little further? Maybe. I mean, you could maybe do both, and you could do the, those other squiggly lines as well. I don't know. I kind of like this though. It adds. It makes it a little poofy, and it's neat. But again, completely up to you. Neat tangle. I like it. All right, and I hope you did too. If you did, please click the like button. And if you haven't done so yet, 
and like it enough to see more. Would love to have you be a subscriber uh, to the channel. Uh, I've already mentioned the description section. Oh, just a little bit. Uh, you can find links to the step outs. I always do my own version and then link to the creator of the tangle. Uh, then there's also ways to connect with me there or a link to my website and to uh, Facebook page so you can follow me there if you happen to be on Facebook and if you want to hang out with a bunch of nutty I was just thinking what what adjective do I want to use today <laughs> uh, we have a really a wonderful group of tangle addicts and we are quite a bit nutty um, at the same time and it's just so beautiful um, they're a really amazing group of people. Uh, so if you'd like to hang out with us and, uh, you know, share what you do and, you know, and comment on what everybody else does, we get great ideas. Uh, it's so much fun. So uh, that link is there as well. Know that there are three questions to gain entry, uh, membership questions. So uh, just so you're aware, I do teach classes twice weekly on th Tuesdays and Thursdays on and on those Tuesday Tuesdays and Thursdays I do them at two times so 11 a.m. 7 p.m. my time here in Michigan that's Eastern time uh, so if you follow me on Facebook also if you go to my website and click on the classes link I have a list of there's a couple other places that I post the classes so uh, you can follow me there and if you want to follow my blog follow me I, I do post like this is a daily tangle that I post as well as recaps to the classes and things when I get them done uh, and yeah I think that's about it so anyway would love to tangle with you sometime I, I, we, we, I can't I just can't even say it enough that we have so much fun uh, but we have so much fun join us all right so with that thanks so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling